What if a comet was a flying crater? Sounds rude at first, but there might be truth in that statement. I say that because I've obtained plenty of footage of what I consider to be cometary phenomena occurring during crater formation experiments. During such experiments, the soil content was dry and a vacuum pump was applied to a 1.5 liter chamber. An electric discharge clears away materials until a stable path forms, leading from a cathode in the soil to the anode, roughly 25 centimeters above the surface. After this happens, the crater begins to glow hot, increasing brightness. The discharge also changes. An ambient purple glow will occur at the surface and a white filament leads to the anode. The glow discharge resembling the coma of a comet, while the filament resembles a tail. These are examples of what I believe to be clues hinting at the power that exists to form the feature that defines this channel, the crater. If we consider that one power source forms crater and comet analogs in a chamber, then we might consider that an active comet represents the scale of power available to produce a large electrically machined crater. Without getting too technical, we can make some rough estimations to determine if this kind of assumption is consistent with what is possible. Keep in mind, I'm not a plasma physicist and these calculations are assumptions. A coma from a comet can be anywhere from thousands to millions of kilometers in diameter. The chamber that contains these plasma displays is roughly 10 by 25 centimeters. The power source is a high voltage transformer rated for 30 milliamps. We can fit 40 million square wine bottles into one square kilometer. With 30 milliamps per bottle, that calculates over 1 million amps, or 40 lightning bolts per kilometer. If we made a chamber 25 meters in diameter, we might be able to harness a single lightning bolt as a power source for a scaled up experiment. With these estimations, this would mean that a coma with a 50,000 kilometer diameter might contain up to 2 million lightning bolts of current. I find that number exciting, but wonder if it's overestimating. Is that kind of current even available? Believe it or not, there is current available out there that might be comparable to what a crater would require. It's well documented that the sun accelerates copious amounts of positively charged hydrogen nuclei up to 450 kilometers a second. This field of nuclei is known as the heliosphere and extends roughly 70 to 90 astronomical units. The heliosphere interacts with the magnetic field of the sun, producing a rotating sheet of plasma with a total electrical current of 100,000 lightning bolts at any given moment. Comparing that level of current with our assumed range of 40 lightning bolts per kilometer would give us an area of 2,500 kilometers. That's interesting, because most complex craters range from 50 to 150 kilometers in diameter, and a 2,500 kilometer range includes even larger craters and basins found in the solar system. Notice also that the size of the discharge in an experiment is a lot smaller than the resulting crater. Perhaps at one time or another, this current was acting on bodies or producing bodies as a means of equalization and was the driving force behind complex crater formation. Comets are thought to be gatherings of leftover ice and dust from our solar system's formation. These supposed dirty snowballs are said to inhabit areas incredibly far from the sun and require measurements in astronomical units. These comets then get perturbed by forces, mainly gravitational, and end up on trajectories toward the inner solar system. When approaching the inner solar system, the light from the sun and the solar wind heat the dirty snowball, causing sublimation. When the gas sublimates, the comets release dust and gas that interacts with the solar wind and produces the spectacular displays that we see in comets. Some asteroids in the solar system bring this process into question. There are a small number of asteroids with stable orbits that have been observed to be active comets. Of course, this raises a couple of questions. How has the comet maintained its water content for billions of years whilst being close to the inner solar system? And, with no apparent change in its distance to the sun, why does the comet suddenly become active? 
Another question one might ask, why does a small object in the solar system contain enough volatile materials capable of expanding into a coma 50,000 kilometers across, or millions of kilometers across? That is a considerable amount of atmosphere locked away in a small rock. Another observation is that of comet nuclei containing rocky stratification, similar to what we find on Earth. Stratified rock is associated with the presence of pressure and or weather. The observation raises questions about an object's ability to sublimate material and maintain its slow geological process that stratifies the rock. A final observation worth mentioning is the discovery of copper sulfide in comets. Copper sulfide is a mineral family that forms in the presence of liquid water. Large amounts of atmosphere, minerals associated with liquid water, and stratified rock, these are telltale signs that comets did not form in the far reaches of the solar system, but were ejected from highly energized bodies that accommodate these observations. We might see comets as what was once the surface of a moon, or even its birthmarks. The equalization of charge leaving the body scarred, but sending out a herald that passes through the solar system continuously. With each pass, it testifies to the nature and place of comets in history.